Hello everybody, this is Shirley, and welcome to So, so Till We Begin Embroidery. Thank you for stopping by. I do appreciate it when you come by. Today, I will be talking about freestanding lace. I'm going to do a little project where I'm going to do some freestanding lace to be put on a pair of jeans. Uh, I've had these jeans for a while, so um, I still like them. They're really cute. They're straight leg but um, I'm going to give it a try. If I mess up, I don't care because, like I said, they're not brand new jeans. But that's going to be my project for today. Uh, I am going to show you from beginning to end how I uh, hooped the stabilizer, what type of stabilizer that I'm using. I also will talk about the thread that is necessary, and then I will show you on the machine uh, everything and also how to get rid of the stabilizer all of the things that you need to know as far as using freestanding lace so if you've never done freestanding lace before this would be a good beginners tutorial if you have used freestanding lace before you can look at the video and and perhaps give me some pointers so if you have anything to say uh, about the video that could be helpful make sure you put comments below that's the whole purpose of this community, to make sure that we are learning together. And this is a project I've never done before. I've done freestanding lace before, but I have never done them and attached them to any type of garment or put anything together or anything like that. I've just um, sewn it out. I think one, I've never really made any type of... Um, freestanding lace for clothing or anything like I said one Christmas I did some freestanding lace for ornaments using mylar and I'll probably do a tutorial or a demo on that uh, coming up to Christmas this year because I think I'm going to make some more that was really fun but anyway let's get to the project and I will show you the jeans and everything else that needs to be uh, discuss doing the freestanding lace project. So here are the jeans and as I mentioned they are pretty well embellished anyway. I got them from Chico's Plat and they're Chico's Platinum. Like I said I got them a few years ago and I'm going to add the lace down here somewhere um, in the front on the outside of those creases. Yes, I still use creases in my jeans. I'm I'm that age. So that is what I'm planning on doing. So I'm going to show you exactly how I go about doing it. One of the most important thing is to make sure you have the right stabilizer. Uh, the stabilizer that I use for my freestanding lays, I think I got them off of Amazon. I'm not sure, but it is the super stable and it says uh, water all gone white freestanding lace and it's the 12 by 19 yards I think it is and it's wash away and I've used it already and let me show you the lace I've already done I've done that lace already using this um, wash away material I only put one um, layer of this stabilizer in my hoop and as you can see it came out beautifully so I'm actually not going to use this particular lace design I chose another one that's a little bigger because I'm going to do one on each leg and I wanted it to be uh, kind of coming up the leg without having to do two laces and then when I'm done I'll show you how I plan to attach them to my to my jeans I am at my machine now and you can see I have the lace on the screen. I uh, ran my camera uh, just to see how I was going to fit in the hoop and uh, as you can see it is ready for me to do the tracing which I always do. It doesn't have the size on here. Yes it is. It is 4.22 by 9.61 and I'm using my mighty hoop of course my 8 by 13 mighty hoop and you see how I have the material already hooped in there and it is just the one the one layer 
and I'm going to go ahead and do the tracing as I always do. I'm, I'm not worried about it not fitting, but I always do the tracing. And then I will set up the color, which of course is going to be white. My bobbin is white. Your bobbin needs to be the same color as your top thread. So if you're going to do it in white, black, or any other color, then it is uh, highly recommended that the colors are the same, the top and the bottom, in order for the freestanding lace to come out looking good. I've never heard any um, alternative way of doing that. So that's the way I'm going to do it. So... I am going to go over here and do my tracing. Of course, the machine is going to move and do all of the tracing that it does to make sure everything fits. Nothing is hitting the sides, which I can tell that it's not. But of course, I'm going to look at it um, all film. I've ran through all the parameters, so the green light was blinking it was on too long so i'm going to unlock the machine hit my green button and the machine will start so i'm doing it in all white <clears throat> and i'm actually going to do two one for each side so i will let that stick out and i will show you the progress and the finished product as well as um how i'm going to put them on my jeans I was thinking about how to do that, and I will show you as soon as this is done how I have decided to put them on my jeans. As you can see, that design is completed. Finished stitching out beautifully. I'm going to take it off of here and uh, tear all the, the stabilizer away. And I have to wet it, of course, and let it dry. Then I'm going to go ahead and stitch out uh, another identical one just like that. And once I'm done with that, then I will be putting it on my, on my jeans. And I'm thinking about doing a little extra embellishment, maybe with some pearls or rhinestones or something. But I'll think about that as I uh, place it on there. But just wanted to show you how that works. And um, I'll go ahead and stitch out the other one. Then I'll um, pull all the, all the stabilizer off, rinse it off, let it dry. And then I'll be able to put it on the pants and I'll show you the finished product. As you can see, I have it cut out and uh, cut around it as close as possible uh, to prevent having to melt away so much of the material. So I'm going to take this to uh, my sink and then I'm going to go ahead and put, it, um, put water on it and, and, and get it all cleaned up. Okay, I have it in my sink now and I am dissolving it now. Uh, let's see it's kind of fuzzy. Putting hot water on it. Hot water. And it's just melting away. I don't know if you can tell that. But it is melting away. Make sure all of the all of the fabric has melted off. Then all I have to do is dry it, iron it out, and I'm done with that. And now I have the other one sticking. I have it laid out on a clean white terry cloth towel to let it get all the uh, excess water out of it and just let it dry naturally flat and then when it's good and dry I'll iron it out flat again then it'll be ready to put on my on my pen and um, 
I know I probably forgot to mention, but it's recommended that you use rayon thread. Now, I used polyester because I didn't have any rayon. Went to Joanne, couldn't find any rayon thread, so I said, well, the other one was stitched with regular polyester thread, so that's what I'm going to use. But when I do the next one, I'm going to hopefully have some rayon thread and it will be done in a different color and probably something that can be put together as a pretty design and not necessarily as an embellishment for clothes and then again it might be but anyway i will be doing more of the freestanding lace because i love the look and the other one is stitching now and as soon as i have them both uh, completed dried and um, ready to go on to the pants then i'll show you how all of that comes together well as you can see my project is complete i have um finished both laces i have embellished them hopefully you can see the pearls and the rhinestones that i put on both of the lace embroidery now and this is what i use to put it on the fire uh, fabri fix and it is a permanent fabric adhesive i use that for my rhinestone my pearls and putting the lace on now it dries clear there are some uh, residue with the glue uh, from underneath the um, when I put the, the glue on the back side of the lace and I'm hoping that's going to wash off. Now there's two things that I um, learned. This is my first time doing this project. That is flip your design so they won't be going in the same direction. I didn't think about that until I was putting them on and I was like they should have been flipped. <laughs> so going forward that will happen. Like I said, these are some cute jeans, but they're old. I've had these jeans five or six years, if not more. And um, I wear them. I have no problem with that. And the adhesive is supposed to stay on, even though the jeans are fabric or whatever you do are washed. It's washable. Uh, you can see with the embellish up top, that's on a pocket. And with the uh, legs being at the bottom. I, uh, let me see if I can pull this out. I got it four inches up from the end of the pant leg. So that's how it looks at the pant leg. So I'm going to wear them and I might even model them when I put them on. But I'm not going to put them on right now until they dry completely. But I just wanted to give you the final project. So that is um, what I did with the freestanding lace. And hopefully you guys will try this as well. And like I said, uh, my recommendation is twofold. One would be to flip your design if you're going to have them on both sides of your pant leg. Or whatever you're going to put it on so they won't be going in the same direction they will be more symmetrical that that was the only thing that I didn't like but since they're going to be on opposite legs I don't know if that's going to be that noticeable it's noticeable to me and the gluing of them on there I don't know if there's a better way to do it without the residue so I would have to figure out how that is and I'm hoping that it's going to wash out so it won't show it's drying pretty good now and it's not showing as much so I think I might be okay and I think it's really cute with the with the little rhinestones and I don't know if I can zoom in and get you guys to get a chance to see the rhinestones let me see zoom in pearls and rhinestones They're cute. So that's my project for today. And I will be doing more projects. 
So thank you for stopping by. This is the end of this particular project. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a little something. If you've never done free standing lace, give it a try. You can really make some beautiful things. I um, am going to do a different project on the freestanding lace next time that I do it. And I will be using a different color as well. I love the white, but then you can do freestanding lace with any color, obviously. And as, as I mentioned earlier, it's recommended that you use rayon thread. And that will be for your bobbin and your top thread. So you'll have to wind a bobbin, a bobbin uh, to match the color. And you can make all kinds of beautiful, beautiful projects and put them together. They have all kinds of designs that uh, Embroidery Library is one that I know. Um, Urban Thread. I'm trying to think of what other ones that I've seen that have really nice projects using freestanding lace that you can put together and make some cute little things. Um, I can't even think of what they are. I've, I've seen Christmas trees done and, and Christmas stars. I've seen uh, bows and animals and houses and t uh, tissue holders, all kinds of different things that make really nice gifts. So freestanding lace is something that you might want to do if you've never done it. It's not that hard. Um, you just have to make sure that you have the right stabilizer that you're using to um, make sure that it holds well. Now what I use, I did uh, show you that in the beginning, uh, what I used, and I love it. It works really well. I don't have to double it up. I just put the one sheet on. Make sure it's taut. That's the other thing to remember because I used my Mighty Hoop, but when I hooped it together, it wasn't as taut, so I did have to go around the edges and make sure everything was nice and tight, and you check to get the drum sound just like you do with anything else, and then go ahead and stitch it, and your lace should come out just fine. So I do recommend that you do those things. So if you have any questions, please put a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, if you got anything out of it, I'd appreciate it if you would think about subscribing if you have not already. Also, it's important to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. That does help me with my content with YouTube. So that would be very much um, appreciated. Also, hit the notification bell to make sure that you are notified the next time that I put a video up. So uh, if you're part of my community and you subscribe and you want to, even if you don't subscribe, if you want to keep up with what I'm putting out there, make sure you hit the notification bell so you won't miss any videos. At least you'll know that they're being posted so you can check it out. And I would love for you to look at it from beginning to end so you can get the full gist of everything that is being done and being said. So uh, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Thank you for stopping by. I do appreciate it. And I will be talking to you later.